mockups. They are so important because they allow your design vision to become a reality. And honestly, without them, a lot of the times your client's gonna sit there with a whole bunch of questions rattling in their head. And those questions are actually understanding if they can see their logo or branding kit that you created in the actual real world after they pay up. Because after that, they're all alone. Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Cecil here. So, mock-ups, you definitely know them, right? Usually they're gonna be on business cards, storefronts, electronics, or billboards. Pretty much whatever you guys think of, there's probably a mock-up for it. Now, the way they actually usually work is they're using the actual feature known as Smart Object. This will allow you guys to select that little new page icon on the bottom right of your layer thumbnail. That way you can load your designs into a separate PSD. That will then later update the original PSD after you actually save and exit. And to be honest, there's plenty of free mock-ups to choose from. You have LS graphics, black market, mockup.photos, and mockup world. Probably some really good ones to start off with. Now, a lot of the time, you might actually create mockups that pretty much just don't exist yet. Whether they're gonna be like mockups from your company's photos, or maybe just some new buildings, some clothing, things like that, right? That, however, is exact things that I wanna run you guys through the basics of right now. Starting off with masks. If you're new to Photoshop, and it's likely that you're probably using the eraser, of course, to erase things. However, with the eraser, it's possible to not be able to use Control Z on your mistakes after moving along in your project. Project. So comes layer mask. This button right here to the right of the effects panel. Once you guys click it, you'll see an apply layer mask to the actual layer you had selected. Once you select on that simple white box, no matter what your colors are, they will automatically change to black and white. Don't worry though, your previous colors do stay. But what happens now when you use the actual brush tool on the mask and you also select it on the color black, you'll erase places just like an eraser. But the cool part is if you were to switch your colors down here or press X for the shortcut, white will actually fill back in the spots that you've erased, making it very easy to go back at any time to fix previous mistakes. Now, another cool tip is when you have an object you're building with a lot of clip masks onto it, and then of course you wanna add new photos or things like that, the chain of clip masks may break or maybe you wanna add a clip mask to something on top of something that's already clip mask, it gets really meta and super messy, right? Well, a lot of professionals actually forget this one. What you can do, of course, is make a group, place the object you wish to have clip mask into the group, hold control on the object to grab the actual marquee selection, select back on the group layer, and then of course add that layer mask. Now, no matter what you end up doing, even using gradients, things like that, you can still have things inside the mask of the object and still apply separate layer mask or other objects or effects to certain things. I'm not gonna lie, I just remember this like two months ago, so just like a little reminder, you know? Now, anyway, if you need to remove text or logos, there's actually a few ways to do that. You can use the pattern tool, which is actually one of my personal favorite ways for a little quick fixer. Circle around the text or the object you want to remove, then select and drag to a place that's empty and has the same color or pattern. Now, of course, if that doesn't work, this next thing definitely will. Use a lasso tool where the patch tool actually still works for this too, actually, and circle around that object once again. However, this time, right click and use content aware fill. Here, you want to color in green the places to take a sample from. Being sure you always color around the selection as well to get a really nice clean removal. However, you can hold Alt to change the brush to fill to an erasing brush for spots you wish to not actually take samples from. When you're done, press apply, then okay, and you're good. Now, let's say you wanna actually apply an object to a textured surface and overlay blend mode just aren't doing it for you. And to be honest, for me, that's pretty much all the time. I don't think I've used an overlay blend mode or soft light blend mode in like three years. Anyway, double click on the actual object you wanna place on the textured surface. And under the blending options layer styles panel, you'll see at the bottom, blend if. Here's where you wanna actually test which one works best for what you need. But for me, I usually start with taking the anchor point of the white underlying layer and moving it inwards to get a blend. You can also use the Alt key to split the anchor for more accurate blending. You can pretty much do this with any anchor in Blend If to find that perfect blend that I generally don't think blend modes can actually get you most of the time. Oh, and for the last thing, I actually wanna show you guys how to make your own quick mockups as well. Let's say you guys wanna create your mockup for a Twitter profile example that you wanna to send to clients. We'll start, of course, with creating the overall mockup into the dimension of your choice, which I have mine in a square document. However, once you place all your info where it would need to be presented, since the dimensions of a Twitter header are 3000 by 1000, I'll create another document at that ratio. Immediately, I'll make the starting document layer a smart object, then drag that layer into my working document file and make sure to place it where it would go. Now, all I have to do is open up my smart object header file again, drag my new client's header that I created into the document, save it, and head into my working file once again. And just like that, I 
created my own mock-up. I've actually used this exact method for my personal mock-ups that are in a specific building or like a, a poster or a billboard, things like that, right? I've used that for this instance. It's definitely a really nice thing to have internally for like partnership pitch decks or like a client like case study. Either way, this has basically been the mock-ups for dummies video. And with that being said, since HQ out, we are gonna keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Let much love, peace. And uh, sorry for my sick voice. It's just, it happens, man. It just, it happens. Later.